Hi folks, hope you're okay today, it's good to be with you. If you'd like to turn to the book of Jude, and uh, we're having a, a short Bible study on the book of Jude. These Bible studies are done at the house, we're still continuing to do the house, and it seems to be the Lord's bringing people, still bringing people, uh, and uh, it keeps the meetings going, so we keep teaching the Bible. So, so if you turn to the book of Jude, don't believe what I say, check it in the Bible, check what I teach. I might teach you what the Bible teaches. That's the main thing. The book of Jude. <clears throat> Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ, and brother James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father, and preserved in Jesus Christ, and called. Mercy unto you, and peace and love be multiplied, Beloved, when I give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in and other words who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterwards destroyed them that believed not. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath preserved in everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them in the manner giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh are set forth for an example suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise, although so, these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominion and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring against him a railing accusation. But said, The Lord rebuke thee, but these speak evil of those things which they know not, but what they know naturally as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the error of Balaam, for reward and perish in the gainsaying of Keller. These are spots in your feast of charity, when they feast with you, feeding themselves with fear, Clouds they are without water, carried out of, of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. Raging waves of the sea, foaming out their shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness for ever. And Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly, among them all of the ungodly deeds which they ungodly committed and all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. These are murmurers, complainers, walking after their own lusts and their mouths speaking great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. And that they told you there should be mockers in the last time, who should talk after their own godly lusts. These may they too separate themselves, they who separate themselves, sensual having not the Spirit. But ye, beloved, building up yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost, keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And of some have compassion, making a difference, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling, and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Saviour be glory, majesty, dominion, and power, both now and evermore. Amen. Well, we have so much to say in this chapter, in this uh, book. 
So just let me get my notch ready. So, verse 1, Jude, the servant of Jesus. Jude is known as the Lord's brother. There's not much argument about that, but notice this, he says, Jude, the servant of Jesus. So even though he's the Lord's brother, he sees himself as the servant of Jesus. He's a servant. Are you a servant today? He says, of Jesus Christ, the brother of James, to them that are sanctified of God, that God sanctifies us. God helps us to walk right are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ. God preserves us, he keeps us. And he says, our call, God is the one that calls us. God calls us, my friends. But in the midst of that calling, in the midst of that sanctification, he says, there's mercy unto you and peace and love be multiplied. He wants them to be encouraged. But his attention has been taken up with something that's happened in the church. False teachers have come in. And he says this, verse 3, Beloved, when I give all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you, exhort you that you should earnestly contend for, but for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. He, he, he was writing to them, but then he realised, you know what, there's this topic that I need to tackle and I don't really want to tackle it, but I have to tackle it. If you turn to Acts chapter 20, verse 9. Acts chapter 20, verse 9. Paul says this. I think. Acts 20, Acts 20 verse 29, sorry. Acts 20. Verse 29, For I know this, that after my departure shall grievous wolves enter in among you, not spurring the flock. Also of your own selves shall men arise, speaking perverse things, to draw away disciples after them. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. So, we've got to face the fact that within the ranks of the church, there are going to be false teachers they're not going to be living right and they're going to try and pull people away from the truth and it says we must earnestly contend for the faith now the Greek earnestly contend has the idea of fight with all your might that we have to oppose that which is ungodly and that which is trying to undermine apostolic teaching when it says earnestly contend for the faith the faith there is the teaching the body of doctrine the, of the apostles now, doctrine is a dirty word in the church. People say, we don't need doctrine. We, doctrine divides and doctrine's not important. Well, it says earnestly contend for the faith. The faith means a body of doctrine, the fundamentals of the Christian faith. If we turn to the book of Titus, Turn to the book of Titus with me and look at chapter 1, verse 5. For this cause left I thee in Crete, but thou should see, set in order the things that are wanting, and certain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. If any man be blameless, husband of one wife, having a faithful children, not accused of right or unruly, for a bishop must be blameless, and the, as the steward of God, not self-willed, not soon angry, not given to wine, not striker, not given to filthy lucre. But a lover of hospitality, a lover of good men, sober, just and holy, temperate. So we're to call elders in the church that to have this character. But notice this, verse 9. Holding the faith fast, the faithful words, as he had been taught, that he may be able by sound, what? By sound doctrine, both to exhort and to convince the gangsters. So here, an elder must be sound in the faith, sound in sound doctrine. People need to be taught the rudimentaries of the faith, the doctrine, the sound teaching. If you turn to the book of Acts, chapter 2. Acts, chapter 2. So, 
People who are intolerant of doctrine, impatient of doctrine, don't want doctrine, are not biblical because the Bible clearly teaches that sound doctrine is absolutely important. Chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. And verse 46. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house, did eat with meat with singleness of heart. Sorry, um. Yeah, verse 42. Acts chapter 2, verse 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, fellowship, and in the breaking of bread, and in prayer. So, prayer, breaking of bread, fellowship, but they stood on the apostles' doctrine. There should be no. There should be no disparaging of sound doctrine. It's wrong for a believer to say, I don't want doctrine. Of course we, we're to walk in the Holy Spirit. Of course we're to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Of course it's about Jesus and loving Jesus. But it's not just any Jesus. It's a sound doctrinal Jesus. He is the God-man. He is not just a prophet. He is not an angel. He is the God-man. And we need to know that in our minds. We need to have sound doctrine of who Jesus is. So that we can worship him and adore him. So elders and the church need to be sound in the faith. And it's not to be compromised. I met a, an Anglican minister who was doing a, a service a few weeks ago in Chester. And he, he said that it was okay to, to uh, believe the Bible had faults in it. And he's not teaching sound doctrine. He shouldn't be a minister. We need to contend for the faith. When apostolic teaching of the fundamentals of who Christ is and all that he has to done for us is undermined, then we have to make a stand. We have to make a stand. We're not going to be popular. So, then it says, verse 4, For the, a certain man crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. When you get false teachers in the church, it's, they do it, they teach false teaching to hide their ungodly lifestyle. They, they're using it as a small screen to live a sensual lifestyle of sexual sin primarily but God sees this and he does not let it go he judges it and we see great powerful words of judgment verse 6 and the angels which kept not their first estate but left their own habitation he hath reserved in everlasting change unto darkness unto the judgment of the great day even the angels rebelled and they got judged and he, and he talks about angels, he talks about Sodom and Gomorrah, he talks about various people who rebelled against God. Verse 11, Woe unto them, for they have got in the way of Cain, and ran greedy after the error of Balaam, for reward uh, perished in the gainsaying of Korah. So they rebelled, and God judged them in the Old Testament. And he's saying, look, these people who were teaching falsely, will be judged and you might see in a denomination or a church false teachers and they might be teaching and people might think oh it's okay and it's all right but god sees it and god is going to judge powerfully in those churches and denominations and groups that have leaders who are living ungodly and bringing the gospel into disrepute he will judge us if we continue to promote things that are not right now, in the book of Jude, he quotes Old Testament and quite a number of times, but then he also quotes um, apocrypha literature, books that are not in the Bible. So we read verse 9, Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, 
Dost not bring against him a railing accusation, but said, The Lord rebuked thee. And verse 14, And Enoch also, the servant from Adam, prophesied of thee, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints. Now, here it doesn't mean that Jude is saying, Look, these are the word of God. These apocrypha books that are not in the Bible, they're the word of God, and quoted from them. No, it's quoting from them because... In the time of Jude, they were like popular literature. And in a prophetic or an amazing way, there have been traditions handed down that the Holy Spirit has shown Jude that they are actually correct. So, there are lots of things mentioned in the Bible from history that have been passed on and the Bible mentions it. And that's what uh, is happening here when he's quoting uh, these apocrypha. He's pointing out that there are some things in, historically that have been preserved and the Holy Spirit is using them in the Bible uh, to make an application. So that's the question is why does Jude quote the apocrypha or books that are not in, in the Bible? And I've given you some kind of answer to that question. But the application here is that whenever there is evil within the church, verse 12, these are spots in your feast and of charity when they feast with you, feeding themselves with, without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about with winds and trees, whose fruit withereth without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots. This is not politically correct language. This is a spade is a spade this is they are bad and they're doing wrong and God is going to judge them and God is saying here look these people who are teaching false I'm going to judge them so don't go their way don't go the way of false teachers if you turn to 2 Peter chapter 2 you need to study Jude in conjunction with 2 Peter chapter 2 so if we turn to 2 Peter chapter 2, it's exactly more or less the same kind of language as Jude. But there were false prophets all among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that brought them, and bring up themselves with destruction. So Peter saying, look, there's going to be false teachers. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feigned words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now for a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. For if God spurred not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell, and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved unto judgment, and spurred not the old word, but saved Noah, the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. So he's saying, look, God brought judgment on Noah's generation. He's going to bring judgment on these false teachers. And the whole chapter of 2 Peter is very similar to uh, Jude. And I'd encourage you for you to do a study and a comparison of the two chapters. 2 Peter chapter 2 and Jude and see what the Lord teaches you about that. About that. But the practical application is there are going to be uh, false teachers. So, don't be surprised to see false teachers in your midst. Let's look at Matthew chapter 24, verse 11. Matthew 24, verse 11. Matthew 24, verse 11. And many false prophets shall arise and shall deceive many. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Verse 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to the seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. 
speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with an odd hand. So there's going to be false teachers coming in. And many will depart from the faith following sedu seducing devils, doctrines of devils. 2 Timothy uh, chapter 3 verse 1. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1. This and also knowing the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boastful, proud, without natural affection, traitor, heedy, high-minded. Verse 5, having a form of godliness. Verse 6, for out of this sort are they which creep into houses and lead captive silly women, laden with sins. Verse 7, every learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. So again, false religion, false teachers, false, a falseness. And then um, 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 1. I charge thee, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 3. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust they shall heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. So it's coming a time when people will be teaching the Bible and people don't want to know the Bible. They just want teaching that will tickle their ears, that will entertain them, but is not sound and solid. So how are we to stand against this tide of false teaching? Well, Paul, uh, Jude gives us um, the answer to that as we go. Verse 17. But beloved, this is in the book of Jude. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostle of our Lord Jesus Christ. Remember sound teaching. Remember the apostle's teaching. If you turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 2. Excuse me. Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember me in all things and keep the ordinances I delivered them to you, which remember apostolic teaching. Now this is important because the church is very, very impatient of remembering sound teaching. The church doesn't want to look back and see what the apostles taught. It wants to be entertained. It wants to be um, trendy and, and modern. But it, it doesn't really want to be sound. It doesn't really want to be sound in the faith, grounded in the faith. There's, there's a kind of uh, a superficiality around today. And um, it's against what Jude's saying. Jude is saying, no, verse 17, But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles out of our Lord Jesus Christ. We turn to uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1. 2 Timothy chapter 1, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 13, it says, Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in the faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee, keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. So we're to hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. We're to hold fast the words of the apostles and the Lord Jesus Christ. It might not be popular, it might not be politically correct, but we're to hold fast what the Bible teaches. And you need to make up your mind who you, will you serve, modern culture, politically correct culture that will be impatient with you, that will put you down, that will call you all sorts of names, or are you going to hold fast to sound words, the sound words of the apostles? Then it says, verse 18, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who walk after their own ungodly lust. So there's going to be these sensual people around in the church Verse 20, but ye beloved, building up yourselves in your most holy faith. So we need to build ourselves up in the holy faith. That means read the Bible, study the Bible, read good Christian books, read some of the Puritans. Have a go at reading some of the Puritans, some of the great Christian classics like John Bunyan's Pilgrim Progress or 
something. Build yourself up in the most holy faith. And then praying in the Holy Ghost. It's not just a dead orthodoxy, but this is alive. And so we allow the Holy Spirit to work in our lives. Verse 21, keep yourselves in the love of God. Yes, we hold to sound doctrine. Yes, we hold to sound teaching. Yes, it's not just dead, but it's alive in the Holy Spirit. But also, it's full of love. Keep yourselves in the love of God. Keep yourselves in the love of God. So we're to have a loving disposition. Looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. In other words, depending on the gospel, depending on his grace. Every day we need fresh supplies of his grace and his mercy and love in our lives. And then we're to deal with people in two ways. One is a try to snatch people out of false teaching with compassion. Verse 22, and some have compassion making a difference. So there are some people who go into false teaching and they really don't know what they're doing. And you can be gentle and loving with them and say, come on, come on, you're going the wrong way. And be very gentle with them. And if you're gentle with them, you might win them back. But then... Verse 23, and others saved with fear, pulling them out of the fire, hating even the garments spotted by the flesh. Sometimes the gentleness doesn't work. Sometimes you need to say, look, you keep going down here, it's going to be bad for you. Tell them the fear aspect. Tell them the danger. So some we can be gentle with, some we have to show it's not going to be good for them. Verse 24, now unto him, that's my uh, text. Now unto him, sorry about this. <laughs> sorry, it should go in a second. says, verse 24 of Jude, Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of the glory with exceeding joy. When you feel you haven't got strength, when you feel you can't go forward, he can keep you from falling. He can give you the strength. He will keep you. So that's a few things in the book of Jude. Have a read of Jude. There's a really good book that you could read. It's a Puritan writer called Thomas Menton. And he's wrote a book on... Uh, Jude. I would encourage you to go and listen, uh, excuse me, to the book of Jude, uh, read the book of Jude by Thomas Menton. It's a Puritan book and it will do you good. Also, if you go to Sermon Audio and have a look at the book of Jude and see what preachers there, and there will be some really excellent preachers there that you can listen to on the book of Jude and will be a real blessing to you. So I hope that this little study has inspired you, has encouraged you, and uh, inspired you to, to stand fast in sound teaching, in the faith. And uh, we've got a few more sermons to do. I've got two more sermons to finish off, and then a, a little bit of apologetic material. So let's pray. Study the book of Jude, imbibe it in your spirit, and may it really bless you and, and help you to stand fast for the faith in the coming days ahead. Um, we're going to have real challenges in the future uh, and we need to be strong in the faith and stand for what's biblical. And so let's pray that God would help us to do that in a loving way and in an experimental way, in, in, the, in the power of the Holy Spirit, not in the flesh and not in dead orthodoxy, but in sound teaching, in the power of the Holy Spirit, building ourselves up on the most holy faith, praying in the Holy Spirit, and keeping in the love of God. So let's pray. Father, we come before you today, and we've looked at weighty things. Lord, leaders walking in sexual sin and teaching people to do that. Lord, you will judge, you will not overlook. And so God, we're conscious in our own lives our own weaknesses and failure. We pray that, Father, you would forgive us. And, Father, help us to live a life that's right before you. 
the Father, you've challenged us to contend for the faith, that we're not to sit back and just let false teaching engulf the church and false teachers take over the church, but we are to make a stand. And that which is right, we have to say, and even though we're not popular, we still have to do it, Lord. And Lord, help us to build ourselves in the faith, help us to be in the Holy Spirit, and help us to walk in love. But Father, help us not to sit back, but to earnestly contend for the faith. That we have to stand up for our Lord Jesus Christ, we have to stand up for that which is right. And it's not going to make us popular, but Father, we pray that our eyes will be on eternity and for your glory and not popularity. And I pray for my brothers and sisters today who have heard your word, that what has been shared today would build them up and strengthen them and encourage them and help them to go forward in their walk with you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Well, I've got two more sermons to do. It's been good to be with you. Don't forget, my website is jasonbirdspreacher.com. You can find my Twitter and Facebook. Uh, don't forget, we're doing evangelism uh, around the UK. We need your prayers. And uh, you can find out all about how to support the work in prayer and keeping in contact with me on my website, jasonbirdspreacher.com. And uh, if you like this study, um, I would encourage you to do some more. Uh, go to Sermon Audio and Google Jude and see what sermons you can find and Bible studies there, and I'm sure you're going to be blessed. So I hope this has been a blessing to you. I hope that you're encouraged. Keep strong in the Lord. Don't get discouraged. Don't give up. Don't go down, but keep going forward in the faith. So God bless you, and have a lovely day. Take care now.